Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Dad. Hello. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse on a on a on a on a Monday. On a Monday. Ain't that ain't that crazy? We're, we're, we're just kind of quirky like that, guys. Sometimes we flip shit around. Um, hey, everybody. Um. Boss? Hello? All right, we're good now, though. Thank you for the heads up. That's fucking stupid. Hello. Um. We oh, were people really die. That's a lot worse than lying. About... Yeah, some yeah it is. Um, yeah. So what I was saying, and uh, we um, people plural. A lot of shit happened. Um, oh yeah, like it was fun. A lot of shit happened, and uh, normally we have like a sort sort of format for the discourse, but I feel like today we're just gonna kind of dive right in. You know what I mean? I feel like that makes more sense. <laughs> we're not doing D and D tweet of the um, week because I just want to start by saying that. Before yesterday's session, the camping to death count was one. Davian. And the now five. camping to death count right, right now is sitting at five. So um, we had four deaths and one of them stuck last session. Yeah. So <laughs> last we left off, uh, you know, a little recap. The party <gasps> wait, went, wait. uh, No. Can, no. can we can i just read this one page of notes as the recap because it's hilarious sure uh oh sure go on literally the notes just says fight capital letters a lazarin dies killed by baddie marcus tries to revivify success i'm down Jax gets me up cast down me again one fell swoop from bad guy i'm dead marcus revivifies me chain devil kills kess a lazarin tries to revivify success brooks is down now immediately gets back up nat 20 hit again back unconscious a lazarin unconscious me next then marcus kess uses dashu's vessel to teleport away Jax perma killed baddie marcus back up chain devil ends my life that's, yeah, that's, that's, my about, that's yeah um for more context <laughs> Um, the party uh, went to a town, a small farmer village uh, called Natil, um, to retrieve an artifact, uh, a tooth of Asmodeus, um, father of all devils. And it turns out, or it turned out that the devils there uh, had invaded and were using the tooth as the catalyst for a ritual to open up portals to have an army of devils invade the prime material plane and natil would be there would, would be the ground zero of what could have been potentially just a, a devil invasion um the party then stepped in uh, and daigon after some discussing with the party uh daigon ran in and tried to snag the tooth uh, in order for the party to just get out while they could but by snagging a tooth while it was being used to, to channel these portals, uh, the ritual went wrong. And instead of a bunch of portals opening up for devils to enter the Prime Material Plane, instead, the entirety of the chapel that they were in got transported to the Hells. As in, the, um, the ritual kind of reversed itself, in a way. Uh, and the party and the chapel and everyone in it was transported to Nessus, the ninth of the nine hells, the home of Asmodeus and his uh, his dark eight, eight pit fiend generals that oversee his armies. Uh, one of these generals, Balzaphon, which is also the 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 name of the episode, uh, uh, as as I sent it to Bal, I was like, yeah, we'll just call it Balzaphon. That makes the most sense. Um, which ended up in a big fight. Uh, on the devil's home turf. One big difference when fighting devils in the hells is if they die in the hells, they die permanently. Whereas if they, if they die in any other plane, their soul gets transported back to hell to go through a painful regeneration process that sometimes lasts years. Um, so instead, the devils that got killed that uh, in that fight died permanently. It was a long fight. It was a hard fight. And it took... A lot of effort, it took a lot of sacrifice, but the party stood victorious. Many people went down, many people died and got back up. 
when unfortunately Daigon um, fell and both clerics were out of spell slots so weren't able to revive Daigon one last time. So yeah, the party then got uh, help from a crew of tieflings who noticed this chapel suddenly appearing out of thin air that came to investigate a group of tieflings led by a tiefling named Righteous who um, are part of a military group called the Iron Crusade who apparently hail from Avernus as they uh, briefly mentioned. Uh, Avernus being the first layer of hell uh, or the first of the nine hells uh, ruled by Tiamat who is directly who directly reports to Asmodeus 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 pick your pick um so before anything else uh I would like from just you know how did you guys think it went guys <laughs> How, 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 in all, how, hmm. in all honesty, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm the least upset about my own character's death, <laughs> the group, because, narratively speaking, to me it makes sense, um, because even though it was like a, a largely group decision, as the the character that physically grabbed the tooth and teleported us there and made it even more dangerous being the one that goes down. I like that symmetry. Also, I, I've gone unconscious almost every fight because, like, I'm a monk. I'm up close, punch, punch, spear, spear. So I'm in the most, like, Brooks and I take the most direct damage typically. So it also just, in a rule of numbers, makes sense. And the only thing that I was, like, my first thought when she went down, down was... They're never gonna figure out what's wrong with my brain because there's still an unresolved thing. And then Dutch and I talked about it, and that potentially, if, if Daigon gets brought back, that doesn't go away just because I died. So that plot point could still get resolved if she comes back. But yeah, honestly, to me, it's I feel like that fight. If we came out of it and no one died, even including the revivifies, like fine. But I still felt like one of us like for the the level of severity that fight and even even though you're already nerfing it for level six is like it was one of the generals of hell we're in the ninth circle i feel like that's a reasonable consequence that we lose a party member for that level of conflict so yeah it was I, by far <laughs> the like hardest fights you've ever had you, you, you absolutely uh, it, it would have been hard to, to to pick you know to take that fight in the chapel as it is but the fact that <clears throat> It was in their home ground. The devils knew the stakes because they they also know that oh we're home now. If we're we dead die, dead. we're dead. <laughs> so they just didn't pull their punches. And um, as a DM, it's always like I'm a I I like to consider myself a pretty pretty generous DM uh, when it comes to things like. But that fight, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to pull my punches. If someone dies today, then so be it. I didn't say you were you know a generous I mean? DM, because the NPC that you gave us, like, br literally brought multiple of us back to life, did a ton right. of damage. He was, like, he was... MVP potentially of that whole encounter. So it's like you were you were with the same hand you give it you take it away. So I think you were yeah, pretty like, I, I, I think you did I a put, good job. I put him in like I I made him a, like a like a I I decided when I was writing the whole like Natil thing was like okay, they're going to find a cleric and he's going to help because this fight's going to be hard and they're going to need an extra healer. That was why yeah. I decided to put a, a fucking life domain cleric in. Yeah. Um and boy gosh golly did you need him. <laughs> My dude came in clutch. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> I mean, for everyone but me, I was I was great, <laughs> dude. Because like, I I mean, if he wasn't there with three with he had, I he had three diamonds, used two of them, then he ran out. Of, uh, and the thing is, the only reason he didn't have his third spell, his third revivify ready, was because he can't speak of hope. And that came in like, very helpful. He, so I think he that had, was worth he had it. three third level spell slots. One was used for beacon of hope, and two were used for revivifies. And Beacon yeah, of Hope got like, a lot of use because there was multiple Beacon wisdom of saves, of lots of healing alive. at max, so, so fair. You know, uh, I was, uh, Ethan, your thoughts? 
Yeah, how did you think it went, Ethan? <laughs> I mean, we as a, like, someone lived and that's, uh, like, we didn't TPK, right? Sure. Yeah, and at sure. one point it was looking very possible. Because we oh, had yeah, four like... of us out at once at one point. I mean, there were a lot of, like, there are a lot of choices generally that we make that are suboptimal because we as <laughs> players tend to lean more towards what our character do rather than what is the best choice for me right here right now. But there were like, it was one of those fights where like you really have to think tactically about what you're going to do. I couldn't just be like, okay, Brooks hit things now. Hmm. Like I, I have a, what is a fairly simple character mechanically. Yeah. Same. For now, yeah. And, like, I really had to think about what I was doing. It, You know, being a caster in that must have been hell. Like, trying to manage your resources and, like, decide what's important. Mm. You know what else I just thought of? What? I lied. The thing I'd be most upset about is not the whole dying with a lingering madness. If, if Daigon doesn't come back, I still never once got to use the effect of those stupid <laughs> dragon armbands that I've had for, like, 40 episodes. And they've done me nothing. Anyway. Oh, well. Um, yeah, but with that said, um, Daigon is dead. Um, there are, you know, the clerics that are with you have the ability to postpone or, like, extend the window of opportunity that there is for certain resurrection rituals. Um, but it, not right now, it's just a matter of, A, finding a way out of hell. And then B, making it so that it's on time, you know, f within that time frame. And then C, they're going to have to find someone that is able to perform the ritual. I have a proposition for and that. And then D, <laughs> <laughs> um, the ritual has to succeed. So there's a lot of ifs. Like, there is, you know, and obviously Laura has the biggest say in this, but like, if all of it, like, there is a chance not a very big chance, but there is a chance. You know what I mean? So, like, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Laura has a few weeks to think about. We already talked a bit last night, but Laura yeah. has a few weeks to think about um, what she wants for Daigon. Like, if all, everything goes well and succeeds, you know, does Daigon want to come back? You know, shit like that. So, we'll uh, we'll see. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Laura will be here this Sunday. Uh, she will be joining us. Uh, she'll be playing um, a character... Um, Basically, one step up from an NPC, a yeah, temporary. Like she's not going to bring in the character that she would bring in if Daigon ends up being permanently gone. Um, but she's going to bring a PC bring in, bring, NPC. She's she's going to yeah, a PC NPC twenty five yeah exactly. Yeah. Um. So Laura will be here on Sunday. So you know you don't have to miss her, guys. She'll be here. Um, smile. If it's easier for you, like I would, I'll, I. More I thought at first my my knee jerk reaction was can I still play can I be something but now I'm like you know what I don't mind not being there no, until I mean, it's decided literally... because I feel like because I'm like I don't want to make it weird for them to RP like talking about my my dead character if I'm like out out of my presence there would affect the interactions or they're discussing. Uh, yeah, I don't want, I don't want you and to have like three or four weeks of not having D and D. You know what I mean? Or not having it is like, it having is what it is. You know, and I I can. Well, anyways, I, I think I, I don't think it'll mind be fine. being I think it'll be benched fine. for a bit. <laughs> it's fine, Laura. We'll just completely ignore that you're there when we talk about. <laughs> True. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, in all honesty, that fight could have gone a lot worse. It could have got, like, as a a couple of you, and you, you included, Laura, rolled like shit. I've never rolled worse like, in my your entire rolls life. Were consistently fucking ass. I rolled a, um, above. A seven, twice. Which is also also definitely didn't, <laughs> didn't help your chances there. No. Uh, Duke yeah, we, also and Duke fucking struggled. Battling struggle. it out. Yeah, holy fuck. Battling so, it out for worst we've ever rolled in our entire life. I mean, life. you know, I'm there's only sure so much. Worse. There's only so much I can do. If the dice want you dead, then you, yeah. there's fuck all I can do about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what um, I was saying. I also feel like halfway through the session, part of why also by the end, I was like, I don't get me wrong, I'm sad. I like the character I made of attached <laughs> to her, but I wasn't like heartbroken because I felt like, I don't know, I felt like an hour into that session and part of it was because of my rolling. I'm like, I don't think it's going to end well for me today because like I said, the dice wanted to tell a story and thematically so, yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. That's a character that makes the most sense to go. Yeah. And I was like, the dice had decided, the dice agreed. Yeah. And we're like, nope. 
Nope, was, not allowed. That's terrible. <laughs> like, yeah, your rolls yeah. were on some, on some. Your dice were on some shit, dude. I rolled was... mostly fours, fives, and sixes exclusively, like the it whole time. Cursed. It that's was insane. absolutely cursed. Yeah. But um, let's be real. Character deaths in D and D, like I look at deaths in in our campaigns, and I did that last campaign as well. as like revivifies in combat. Um aren't an automatic success they are very likely to succeed but there's a small chance that they don't right yeah. but when it comes to like proper resurrection rituals and shit uh like rules is written oh you have the things you need boom bop you're there you're good That's lame. but i feel like especially you know the more and more you level up death in uh, rules is written death becomes less and less of a a severity and becomes more of a nuisance like oh Guess who died four times last week? Oh, <laughs> like, and that's, I think that's <laughs> fucking stupid. So, I and I have this like mechanic implemented that I also had last campaign. It was like the more people die, the harder and harder it gets every time to bring them back. Um, so, because I I want death to have meaning. I want my players, both in and out of character, to fear death. Uh, fear losing their character because I wanted to be a genuine risk and not just a oh oopsie I died well that's fine because we have 10 fucking resurrection spells on deck no that's not how that works um it's just not how that works end of you know what I mean because at the end of the day losing a character sucks but it's also a great fucking tool for storytelling and story and and and, and, and character development for the rest of the group that have to now like survive uh, after Diagon has passed and, and shit like that. So, character death sucks, but also opens the wi a window of opportunity for so much good fucking character development and, and storytelling and, and, and shit like that. So, it's, uh, it's a double-edged sword. It, it sucks, but also narratively can bring a lot of good. So, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how this all ends. Uh, it's not It's not permanently... Like, the chapter... Chapter Diagon hasn't completely closed yet, but uh, it's that it, we'll see. We'll we'll see how it goes. Um, the party has some other shit to worry about first, and that is getting out of hell. You know, yeah, that's, that's, maybe that's we'll find Diagon. Maybe we'll find Diagon's soul down here. Like, excuse me. <laughs> what makes you think that's where her soul's going? <laughs> that's rude. <laughs> That's fucked up. I mean, I don't know. Like dying in the hells might be like a like just by default you're stuck there. Doesn't matter. Yeah, what you like... in your life. Um, I don't know the mechanics of death in the hell. But yeah, we um. Before we go into the viewers minute questions, do you two have any questions for me? Why? Why would you do this to Laura? <laughs> My dice did it to me. Really, let's be honest. What? Counterpoint, why? Laura. Why would you do this to everyone else? True. <laughs> True. Well, again, part of me is torn because the other thing about <laughs> that specific character dying is in some ways, if she doesn't come back either through you are unsuccessful or she chooses not to, mechanically, like this is a very meta gamey perspective, mechanically, another character I make is easier for the rest of you because I'll make a character who can speak and doesn't have to talk True! in a language only one party member <laughs> knows. I mean, so, I don't feel maybe like Dagon's, I'm helping. I don't feel like Dagon's inability to speak is like a massive detriment to the group. No, I don't think so at all. Plus, I I, I feel like I think so either. Would... I wouldn't have made it. Like I knew it would be. I was hoping more would just make for some like awkward moments, some interesting RP, and be a really good tool to showcase like growth and relationships and stuff. But it, it there are times where also just even it's harder. Because it's almost like in the extra time it takes me to go like, Daigon signs to Kess, or Daigon's da-da, and then say whatever she's trying to communicate. Um, I get, and our group's still pretty good for the size of our group at a other than an excitable moments, not talking over each other. But I do find I it's harder for me in like really animated conversations for Daigon to get a point across. And yeah, even like though I'm still just like it. verbally chiming in and just those, it's like those extra words for some reason are still making it harder and there's there's definitely times where i'm like well i would have had something to contribute there but now that moment's passed and so we'll, i don't want to make it weird but it's like there's a weird level of rp to that though where like you've got like like especially if kess is distracted if kess is mid conversation with someone and dagon's just there like 
Yeah, because like, the time it would take her just, to also start like doing stuff, like people would already be moved past that verbally. Like, so it if, also if, makes sense. If Kes isn't paying attention, Daigon has no real way of conveying her opinion on the matter. Which I guess is interesting now we're we're sort of at the point where characters will sometimes like take a moment to be like, Hey Daigon, what's your thought on that? Because like on an in character perspective, members of the group realize that Dagon can't contribute in that. And who way. knows, maybe how you heal me does something to her vocal cords too if she comes back. Like who knows? <laughs> I still struggle I, I, with that idea about do I want to like even n death aside, if the opportunity ever came up through like magical or some other like visit was like because I think even Dutch asked like would you ever want to like fix her 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 ability to talk yeah because that's not um, that's not up to me that's yeah and i still i still go back and forth on a daily basis because I mean, it's, it's such I've, a like I've there's pros and cons to me in either side so i don't know i can't i can't tell you it depends i've on my given mood. you my opinion on it, <laughs> i mean if we find a druid and instead of using like resurrection we use you, if you reincarnate me then diagon won't have yeah. damage that's true cords anymore. if you reincarnate me then I can speak. In can get... unless, unless you also find a body that is mute. Oh no, reason. like, <laughs> roll. You roll. It's a oh, D100, it's random. It just, like... and I think, like, the That's DM fun. can adjust that table for other races, because it only includes I find that races. actually very fun. I I'm love the idea lie. that, like, Dagger comes back as a Kenku and still can't speak. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Especially because <laughs> it would be really interesting from that perspective, because also part of her... Like both me making her, and then her, like is a lot of her <gasps> her journey she's to go on is about um, confidence and body dysmorphia and feeling comfortable in her own skin because of her hairlessness, her various things. So imagine if she comes back in a new body, and then it's like, well, now I I need to re I need to just re address that whole relationship because the, the thing the thing that held me back before isn't holding me back now. But then it's like, do I have other issues with whatever body I get? It'd be interesting to see. You could come back, you could be resurrected as someone really fucking hot and still have like horrible bodies as more of you because you don't recognize yourself. Right? Or something, like who knows? It would be like, wild. We'd find out. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it out there. Wizards of the Coast, not the Wizards of the Coast listen to, to player feedback, but <laughs> reincarnation, way cooler than resurrection. Um, more druids, please. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I see why it isn't as commonly used because, like, no one wants to design a character and have them, like. Yeah, people get attached oh, to their character. They paid for art. They're now, like, like way you know? different. But, well, like, I don't so, know, like, from a storytelling perspective. A, a fucking half elf uh, badass that they've been playing for three years and have, like, 10 yeah. different art commissions for. Oh, now exactly. you're a fucking half orc. Good luck. No. Smile. <laughs> I and, now really genuinely, like, want to at some point play a character that's. Like, oh God, imagine you get, like, this far into a campaign and the reveal is, like, they lived for, like, 700 years as an elf and then were reincarnated as, like, a, a fucking dwarf or some shit, or, like, a human. And they just look like a 30-year-old human. And it's like, That'd yeah. That'd be cool. I, That'd be like, fun. Oh, that's so cool. That's Hold a up. Cool Writes idea. notes for backup characters. Writes notes. I'm changing, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my premise. Um, all right. <laughs> Got some questions. Well, we have the beanie. Laura, why did you do this to us? But we move on from that. Haha. <laughs> uh, -ha. uh Koiba, for me, did this go as well as expected? Was there any point you thought we were going to TPK? Uh, several points. I thought this was going to be a TPK. Uh, but that, I went into this fight thinking, this is a risk. There is a chance. Um, but we'll see. Uh, funnily enough, when like four of you were down for the count. I was like, this is not going to be a TPK because I knew he was almost dead. It was like, oh, no, they got this. Like, even though there's four down, they got this. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. like, that must have been a point for you guys to be like, oh, God, we're all dead. But I that was, like, when I was least worried because I was like, oh, like, two more hits and he's dead. So, they're fine, probably. Um, it, it Did it go as well as expected? Um, as fucked up as it is, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. From a storytelling perspective, this is great. Uh, no, yeah. but also just like I, I expected the stakes were high enough that I casualties. feel like this is fair. No, yeah. I expected there. Uh, how do I say this? I 
went into the fight thinking, yeah, there's a good likelihood that somebody doesn't make it to the other side, to the other end of the fight, and that's what happened. So yeah, I feel like I maybe not saying like as well as expected is a good way of putting it, but it went as expected. I think. My expectations. You were hoping for the were best nice. and preparing for the worst. No. Basically. Oh, I have a follow-on question. One. If you expected that someone might die, who did you think? Like, if you had to to put your money on a character to die in that fight? Probably Lazarin, to be honest. Oh, really? Uh, uh, Lazarin makes himself he's targeted fucking by devils. He's squishy, I guess. Yeah, he's squishy, he's a fucking big healer, and these devils are smart. Like... And like you said, they knew the stakes were raised because they were in their home yeah. plane, so death is perma. So they so, like, wanted to... If I, if I had to like bet on it, I would have said a Lazarin, but... Uh, it... So do you think him flying up in the air was probably very smart because the devil's gonna yeah, get to that him made it that, like, bad man? that made it so that 10 out of the 11 bad guys weren't able to reach him. So yeah, that was, that was a... And a, when he went down, was, I just had Naronk flashbacks of the falling off the <laughs> carpet, immediately failing death saves. And I was like, a Lazarin, if you do this, if, if this happens to two of you, I'm gonna be real upset. But he's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there were times where I was like, do I double down? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, I don't know. I, I kind of just went with what in my gut. I, I didn't really think about the, 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 the actions. I was just like, okay, fuck it. We'll just see. And for a lot of times, I was like, I'll just roll a die and see what the guys do. Because I don't, especially in a fight where I know people might die, I'm like, I want my... I don't want my, like, subconscious thoughts to influence it, so I, like, that's when I'll roll a lot more dice to decide who they're gonna target, just so that it's out of my control. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. like, There's a you know? really good book. Uh, I can't remember who it's by, but it's called The Monsters Know What the They're Monsters Doing. The Monsters Know What They're Doing! We have that book. It's a really good book. really cool book, and it talks about, like, like it runs through a bunch of uh, core d, d monsters, and it talks about, like, the ways that they might choose targets based on their intelligence mm. and their culture. And that's really cool mm. to see that, like, if you're fighting against disorganized bandits, they're probably just going to try and go for whoever they think is squishiest because they're going to they're going to try and be scary and intimidating. Yeah. Whereas if you're fighting something like like demons, they're going to go for anyone who's already injured because they're there to cause suffering and pain. Yeah. They also give, like, even if it's, like, you don't want to read, because it's a fairly thick, like, it's more novel-written-esque, not like a player's handbook, like D&D. &D. But there's also quickie sections, like, you don't want to read this whole thing or read the specific monster. There's a basic table, like, if their stats in these areas are good and these are bad, here's basic tactics that would be pretty reasonable for all monsters that share similar stats and how they fight. And then there's, of course, the in-detailed breakdown <laughs> by creature. But yeah, very good book. Highly recommend. Um, for Ethan, hello. Do you think the party is going to be more together because of this current loss, or do you think the party members will recluse? I think that fully depends on people, uh, characters' reactions to this. Because at the moment, everyone's very on board with the "we fix this, we get Daikin back." But obviously, if that's not something that's easily done, mm -hmm. I think there is the possibility of being a division between those that think it's a futile task and those that don't want to give up on it. I think as far as, like, because of the fact that Lazarin mentioned, like, hey, we can, we can extend the window of time we have. I feel like everybody is pretty on board with giving that a shot. So I don't think that's necessarily like a conflict that's going to happen. Because I feel like everybody is kind of on board. Like, oh, you can do that? Sick. We're going to fix this. Um, I think for a lot of the characters, it's uh, the real hitter is going to be... Say you do make it out. Say you do bring, uh, bring Daigon to someone who can resurrect her in time. For it to then fail. Or Daigon to decide like, oh, no, I'm kind of good where I am, bro. Hey, it's been fun. Peace. I think that's when the real, like... I think that's when the lightning's gonna strike. You know what I mean? That's when it's like, oh, fuck. And I think that's... If there's gonna be any, like, conflict or, like, whatever, I think that's when it's gonna happen. I don't think... Yeah, the, I the, do. The, I don't think the, 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 the trek to 
that point any conflict will happen if... because I feel like everybody's pretty pretty much. In I could see conflict there happening between Alazrin and Brooks and Kess because if Alazrin obviously has much more understanding of these processes. And if we find someone powerful enough that tries to bring Dagon back and Dagon doesn't want to, I think a Lazarin would be very understanding of it. that. Whereas Brooks and Kess would be like, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> like I have a proposition. If the group, when they leave the hells, because we also don't know how you're going to leave the hells, we don't know where you'll end up, but if we still end up back in Sagalia and not back in Keldar... All I'm saying is I know both a high level druid and a cleric who is in Sigalia who I mean who could cast those. They spells. might not be there right now. Oh they're there now. It's it's trim. I could be responsible for bringing myself back. Oh, thank you. But the oh, party doesn't anything. really know her and I don't know how you'd find her, but it would be really interesting to be in charge. But then also then I have to make the role for bringing me back, and I don't know if I want that pressure. <laughs> yeah, but like the party, Shim uh, would be in Thermogar, right? Not Sigalia, but yeah, but, but like the party are have... in Sigalia. Am I wrong? Oh, You're wrong. it's north of Sigalia, I guess. Uh, but like, damn it, shit. The party head. doesn't have those connections, man. <laughs> like, how the fuck would they know about this I know. cleric druid? You know what I mean? So I know. I just, um, I just like the premise. Um, for Laura. Were you surprised how much the party would be affected by Daigon's death? Yes. Uh, because that was my first thought when they're all having their moments. It wasn't even... But they, I don't think I was surprised. I think I was just still, like, deep in Daigon brain. Because my first thought, literally, like, I got teary at how much they seemed to, like, care. Like, Davian trying to shield Kes from seeing the body... And Brooks being like, don't, like, we're not put, we're not putting her body in the bag of holding, like, and, like, just things about, like, how everyone was handling it. And I was just like, oh. But and then in my brain, Laura, Laura's like, Laura, everyone, you know everybody likes everybody at this point. Like, we're close. It's, shut up, watch. Um, <laughs> my watch is talking to me. Like, but it was in the moment, my first reaction was surprise and feeling very, like, humbled and wholesome and appreciated and then i was like why am i surprised by this <laughs> afterwards and i think it's because i was still in like character mindset and not just like back to laura at that point especially um uh, and and then after stream Desoko sent me what Jax wrote in her journal and i was like i'm very glad you didn't send me that on stream because i like nearly bawled i was like no so cute it's not very long, but it was to the point. Do you want to know what it was? Uh, Did you put it up on the World Anvil? I yeah. put it on the World Anvil, but I have it up in Discord as well. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to, yeah, fuck it. Because it's not very oh. long. It's not like it's a novel. The note's just, Dear Dagon, I don't know if I'll ever get to tell you how much I appreciate you always wanting to help me. You remind me so much of my daughter. And I was like, Jack, oh. always, always so curious, always so willing to help. You were the glue that kept Kes from wandering too much or Brooks getting too big of an ego. You showed me it's always worth it to keep fighting and to press on. You'll More. always be my favorite in the party and the closest to my heart. I'm just ashamed I never took the opportunity to tell you with Aww. love, Jax. And I was like, ah! and I was like, freak. I was just bawling. Reading that. Yeah. Also, then I was like, the lore! And then I'm the favorite! But then emotions. Dude, fucking... The <laughs> Did his daughter also die to a demon? Maybe. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, we Jack, didn't even know we had one. Jack and now did see I a did. woman get fucking torn apart by a fucking I know! Machine. <laughs> I know! Like, I, the minute that happened, my first thought was, oh no, he killed his family with one of his creations by accident. Like, something went rogue. Ah! Uh, that's my hypothesis for the Jack's lore, but we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> I do. He, um, if Daigon does get revived, do you think this will give her a new perspective on her mortality, or has she, as she's already been close to death, won't it shake her foundations? I don't think it'll change her outlook on mortality, per se. I do know one thing, if she comes back, that I'm very confident her outlook will change on, and I'm excited for because I know how I'm going to reveal that in terms of storytelling, but I don't want to say it until I know for sure whether she is or is not coming back because I think it'll be a cool moment and I don't want to ruin it. Um, but yeah, so her, her outlook on mortality, no. Her outlook on some of her other things she was struggling with that are a bit more 
um, like like self ingrained will change, and it's more from just the the effort. Like if the group makes the effort to do that, she's gonna be very very moved by that and very impressed and humbled by that. Uh, Sassy also submitted some questions uh, for Laura. How do you feel? <laughs> are there parts of uh, Daigon's story you feel sad about that you can't explore? And are you team revival or team new character? I, I mean, even Dutch was asking me and I was like, honestly, kind of like, other, I feel like the mood changes every hour, whether I'm team <laughs> revival or team new character. But I feel like if I really think about it, I'm actually going to write a physical like pro con list, but like revival new character to make sure I'm being objective about it. Because I'm pretty sure all the reasons for new character are more like, because it's not really like metagaming, because the point of D&D &D, you should still be having fun. If I think I'm going to have more fun playing huh. this other character, that's just then that's a, not a wrong That's just thing. as valid a reason to decide to yeah. leave her dead than just RP stuff. Yeah, right? If you feel like you can have more character... fun playing something else, then it's... Yeah, there's lots of fair. character reasons I would love for her to come back of things that were unresolved. Like I said, that one moment I have in mind for um, something she's been struggling with and her outlook on it changing and how to reveal that in the story... Also, just like the thing that Jax wrote, I want to have, a, I want her and Jax to have a little, a little heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And this is also, she'll be a vehicle for us to get that Jax lore now because he wrote that thing about his daughter. She's gonna be like, "Yo." I mean, give Kess a week, and she'll fucking snag your <laughs> snag her journal and fucking start reading it. So, if yeah. Dagon dies, sure. dies, then like, um, we're like divvying up. Then you're all like, reading if, it. Yeah. If yeah. Dagon doesn't um, come back, we're divvying up her shit like a fucking auction. Of course you are. Of course you are. Um and. Like, I, I love to, that whole plot about the where all those different, like, geographical regions, a place where all those things exist, the history of her tribes, like, a lot of her character stuff. Sure, I would like to resolve it, but really, <laughs> the things that make me want to come back the most are, again, like, that note from Jax and addressing that, the thing I'm being very cryptic about, about a thing she's dealing with, but then also this whole lingering madness thing. I'm going to be real annoyed if she died with basically a curse on her that the party hasn't figured out yet that could be easily removed if we took the time to figure it out. But nope. It's because it's so subtle. I mean, like, it, it is, just... it is subtle, <laughs> which is why I'm glad I managed to find some way to hint that. That again, wasn't like me pure metagaming because the premise of the thoughts and prayers drink was try and get some of the party to hear that she was on team nope out of this fight like i'm down she's like but only if we all do it she's like i'm not going to be the one who leaves and leaves everyone mm -hmm. but i would really like to do this but then the only two people that heard her thoughts clearly were not on board with that plan or at least not outwardly so we stayed <laughs> uh but it also allowed for and of course of all people for Kess to hear some suspicious thoughts in her final moments mm -hmm. well my thoughts mostly just hysterical laughter which is an odd not really not reaction because again the whole like laughing and tears come from the same place in your brain there's people who laugh at death and not to be offensive about it it's just an involuntary thing but it it had a bit of an edge it didn't feel like that the way i tried to describe it but anyway <laughs> yeah i think as far as like like that's always the risk right like you write a backstory and you write plot points and like if your character dies then you know that shit just kind of goes down the drain it's kind of the way it be sometimes, you know, it's a risk you, you take when, when you play D&D. Yeah. &D. Uh, as far as, like, writing yeah. goes, like, yeah, um, some things, like, say Daigon doesn't come back, some things the party will find down the line might have something to do with, with some of the stuff yeah. Daigon had, uh, had going on, and maybe they'll, yeah, like they'll, maybe they'll, like, link that... Uh, yeah, because it's more her personal inward stuff that I want her to come back for. It's not mm. that one big plot hook she has. I also feel like I would, I'll, uh, I'll be upset if we then eventually go finish what we started with the Strahd stuff, and she doesn't, because it was her and Kess who kind of were the instigators of that, and it was tied into our session zero. So we'll get to finish that, but Daigon won't be there. And I'm like, it'd be kind of cool if she could be there whenever we get to that. But it is what it is. <laughs> New character would also have a lot of fun dealing with that so <laughs> um yeah we'll see we'll feel it'll be a good it'll be good regardless oh true there is like uh that is true duke you, you, matt no mercer wrote people, a class yeah. that is literally like uh it's like a ghost which like that's cool 
it's which it's is really funny because she was already for, an astral self monk like she it's was purely for characters to like come back and resolve it. Oh, hold on let me look it up uh matt mercer ghost I mean, visually I'm i just find it fascinating because her monk class is also all about very like you know astral projection it's, already uh, she could make Mostly it's called, it's called the lingering soul. It's an optional class or death alternative for fifth edition D and D. Uh, basically, what it is is um, your afterlife. Unfortunately, is not so restful. You've been cut down, left to die, and your spirit now remains unable to pass on. When so filled with fear, anger, questions, binding to whatever symbol will anchor you to the world of the living, you feel the hunger for answers rival your need for vengeance. As you learn to control this ethereal existence, thr existence thrust upon you. Uh, with the aid of your still living allies, you continue the pursuit of your goals using your spectral gifts to frighten, manipulate, and control those who stand in your way. Leaping from body to body, wrestling control from your foes, and you send them to a worse fate than yours. You continue to, to fight for another chance at life or embrace your ghostly talents to do what living mortals cannot, ever fighting the cold and hungry urges that encompass the curse of undeath. So it's basically a way for... Um, yeah, you're dead, but you can like possess motherfuckers and and kind of still personally, live on and and and. and shit. I personally think that'd be a fun thing. Say, if when and whenever, if and when, because again, I'm not assuming they're gonna do it because things could change, things could happen. If and when they get to a point, they find someone they're trying to do, say a resurrect ritual. If the ritual gets like really close, like say it rolls like one or two under the DC, it could be like a okay. Or like, you, like there could be two DCs, like the succeed with consequences, and then the full succeed, and the succeed with consequences could be that. It's like you brought her soul back temporarily, but it's I not feel, enough. I feel like that's a decision that like you have to be on board with, though, if that happens. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. very on board with that. I like that idea of like that's not like, something that they... I'm gonna force upon you. Like oh, yeah, haha. No, I'd be I'd be down for that. That sounds really fucking cool, actually. Yeah, so like uh, oh, for, <laughs> it's it, it's very cool. So um. If a deceased player character returns as Lingering Soul, they lose all their previous class levels and abilities, instead returning with a number of levels in Lingering Soul equal to one less than their previous character level. Uh, Makes they sense. because They you retain any languages track. they knew in life, as well as the racial benefits and abilities, but lose all previous skill still professions. Fast. So you're still fast. Uh, <laughs> save, uh, you lose all your previous skill proficiency, saving the proficiencies and feats and ability score improvements. Um... Starting at first level, you select an object or creature of your. Oh, it could be the fucking meerkat plushie. Uh, Is that my anchor to you this realm? An object or creature my of your choice could be an heirloom, weapon, ally to bind to indefinitely. You must remain within 100 feet of your. It's, it's kind of like a phylactery. You have to like this. That yeah. this is your anchor. Uh, That's so imagine, funny. Having a, imagine having a meerkat plushie oh, because it was the oh, only fuck. thing that Brooks could find that was close to a can. The only thing that would be other than the meerkat plushie of her personal belongings that I think has enough like meaning to her would be the little coral carving that Kai made for her. I could also oh, yeah. see being her anchor. So at first, yeah, level, one of those two at first level, you're a ghostly form. Like you don't have a physical body. Your new spectral form exists in a space between realms. So like people that have like can see like into the that fucking what's that plane called? The ethereal plane will be able to see you and shit. Uh, you've priest type undead, considered undead in all respect to all spells, abilities, and effects. Uh, give up a gold glow, blah, blah, blah. You cannot physically carry anything, so you're a proper ghost. Yeah. Um, then at level 2, you get the ability to possess things and people. So you can enter the so bodies of other creatures and influence their actions. As a bonus action, you can attempt to possess one creature within 5 feet of you. The creature must succeed on a charisma saving throw or become possessed. Um, a creature can Question. choose to fail the saving throw voluntarily. Would I come back if that happened? Because it's one level than your previous. I'm I died at level six, but then the party from the fight hit level seven. You'll be so. You'll, would you'll I just, have you'll like just be six then? Like you'll be one. I'd level be a less. six, yeah, because yeah, it's one like one she would have like leveled as she died basically, and then comes back as one level down, which is a six. <laughs> level three, consume enchantments. At the third level, you've learned how to absorb powerful arcane enchantments from potent items. You can spend an hour siphoning the mystic properties of a magical item. When the hour-long ritual is complete, the enchantment and any attunement becomes indefinitely bound to your ghostly form, leaving the item inert. So if you, like, have, like, um, your fucking bracelet, for instance. My dragon armbands, yeah. Yeah. You can spend an hour with that, and the bracelets themselves will be mundane, done, but you gain the ability of the enchantment that is just latched onto you forever that's cool. fucking sick dude okay, i've never I'm really properly much... read through this but this is dope as fuck what the I hell i say Dutch and i will talk about it but my preference right now is whatever if this they get sick. to a point where they can do a ritual you have 
Or like, and also if I was a, the way I would like to do it, if I was in your shoes and knowing that I'm so down, is there would be a range like like zero to whatever DC one is is fail. Like Diagon doesn't come back whether she wants to or not because mm -hmm. you fucked it. And then a range of like from that to like another one would be comes back lingering soul because you almost got it like it was almost powerful enough but not quite and then the top like the final dc would be that's for her to come back completely in her body as is, is cool and i think spot. that'd also be interesting okay. storytelling wise too that'd be cool and like it gets to the point where you'll be able to like possess motherfuckers without them realizing they're being possessed as well like they'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll just don't know um At 5th level, you've become adept enough at, at possession to utilize the shell of a slain character as a vessel. So you can possess oh, dead damn. bodies and just walk around in their dead bodies and shit. Like, it's really oh, fucking cool. That's fucking creepy. It's really fucking um, cool. <laughs> this is really cool. Think about, but think about with Dagon's weird sense of humor, all the inappropriate things oh, I would do with these abilities. Oh, man. Anyways, Duke, 10 this out of 10 is, idea. This is dope, yeah. That, that, that hadn't even crossed my mind, but this is really cool, yeah. Option number two. <laughs> like, so that is also a potential really thing, I guess. Yeah. Fuck, that's cool. Like, that's cool. Bring her, <laughs> bring her college of spirits bad. What's bring that? her, bring her college of spirits bad, and then like you can have Diagon teach you how to do like cooler shit. <laughs> there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of potential ideas, I guess. Uh, definitely. Luckily, you know, Laura has. <laughs> A few weeks to think about what the fuck she Not wants to do. Um, that's pretty cool. Like I completely forgot about that thing about that like class that he wrote. Completely forgot about that existing. But it's fucking it's fucking cool. And it's one of those stereotypical things of like, oh, once you finally conclude your business, you're you know you can just be you're like, gone. okay, I'm moving on now. Bye guys. Dab. <laughs> that's fucking dope. I get to be our campaign's vax with an expiration <laughs> so, date yeah. if that happens. Anyway. <laughs> um, for Ethan. Hello. Who is Brooks more worried about in the group currently? And did he learn anything from this fight? I mean, for obvious reasons, he's worried about Kess. You know, like, Dagon, I mean, supposedly Dagon's her best friend. Like I don't Kess, like the emphasis supposedly, on supposedly there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Kess and Diagon have a complicated relationship and like... They're complicated people, man. <laughs> they're complicated people and I think like... I don't think Kess is a bad person, but I think Diagon was so... We can be best friends and bad friends. It's just that I've never had enough to be like, I have yeah, luxury of getting a better one. What it legitimately is, <laughs> is that like... I think that... Daigon was so emotionally starved that they, <laughs> like, their entire relationship is, like, Kes. Unintentionally toxic. Kes, Kes is really toxic without realizing because Daigon never calls her out on it because she's yeah. too scared of losing the it's one It's unintentionally and unmaliciously toxic. It's <laughs> like, accidentally uh, toxic. Like, they they both have not massive ideas of how, like, serious, like, friendships work and have just fallen into this and and then like i feel like being with the group dagons i had a few moments of oh shit like maybe that's not okay you know like there have been there's been a couple instances of uh tension between the two of them yeah but that is very off track that's me explaining it, uh, supposedly. No, like, Kess is... Kess is fucked up, right? Like, understandably. Nah, Kess is fine, dude. I mean... <sighs> Who's Brooks worried? Brooks is worried most about Kess and about Alatrin. Mm -hmm. Kess, because he very clearly cares about Kess. She's just lost someone very close to her. Alazrin, Brooks, in Brooks's opinion, Alazrin's not been in a great place for a while. And Brooks is worried that Alazrin's going to take this as a personal failing. And that that's going to hit Alazrin really hard. 
everyone else, like, he's convinced it'll just be fine. Well, not mm -hmm. fine, but, you know, like, they're adults. They can deal this with their fine. own shit. Smile. Um, did Brooks learn anything from the fight? Was yes. Brooks ever? Yes, and it's not good. Oh, God, here we go. Like, Brooks, I mean, Brooks continues to have an ego in regards to his own mortality. But he's now in a situation where he's realizing maybe he's, like, physically he's had to put down, yes, but now he's realizing that maybe he can't protect everyone. Mm -hmm. And for someone who, for the past, like, three quarters of our journey together has been gaslighting themselves into believing that they're not actually friends with these people and they're just like conning them and swaying them onto their own side and being manipulative and is now coming to the terms of the fact that maybe i'm not being a manipulative asshole maybe i actually genuinely care about some of these people and is now also realizing that i'm a dude that punches things surrounded by like fucking demons and magic and shit and i can't keep everyone alive like that's rough for him like he dude he's finally I wouldn't get... go as... he's finally getting humbled that's crazy no it's not even that like i wouldn't go as far as to say it's personal responsibility but it's like um he's never ever not felt confident in his ability to look after himself or the people around him he's just never necessarily like like, he never doubted that he could, like, keep the group alive. He doubted whether it was in his best interests. And now he's at the point where he's like, yeah, I like these people. I want these people around. And he's also coming to terms with that, oh, shit. Like, I did everything I could and people still died. Like... Dude, Dagon died on his birthday, huh? Uh, yeah, Dagon it's really birthday. Died on his birthday. <laughs> like, I can't remember. Did Brooks, did Brooks tell the party... Cause I have, nope. I feel like in no. my head I know, but I think that's just that's Laura knows. I don't think no, anyone ev already so knows it's everyone, your birthday. Everyone because we had a conversation it. about birthdays because I, because we that's the whole thing. Because then Kess and I had a, I was so, like, well, you never gave me one for your birthday. And it's like, well, birthdays well, aren't a thing where I come from, and so I never asked. And I was like, yeah, that's why I never got upset at you for not asking my birthday, and we've been besties for two years because I know birthdays aren't a thing for you. Like that conversation happened, but then why did it happen if it wasn't because it was so your Brooks birthday? on the ship. Brooks told everyone that his birthday would be, like, uh, a little while, like, a couple of days after we got oh, back. Oh, okay. But he didn't specify a date. Okay. The only person who would have any real, like, evidence to guess... Guess from reading Kess. your shit? <laughs> no, because Brooks... Brooks specifically asked Kess... So the day that we're in currently... Yeah, which is the uh, 12th. Well, yeah, now so... it's the 13th, but it was the 12th. So, I mean, I don't know, because we're in the planes. Does time work oh. differently in the planes? Probably. Hold on, let me look. I have no idea what the fuck the rules um, are for time. So, on the long rest of the 11th into the 12th, in the hells, not in the planes, you know what I mean. Um, Brooks, uh, Brooks asked Kess if she would, uh, rather than meditating for four hours and then being up he asked if she would stay up with him and then the night of the 12th he was going to stay up on watch with Kess and that didn't happen because obviously Dagon fucking died we're in the hells Brooks just sat and drank and sulked mm -hmm. but Part of me says that, like, Kess would be able to put two and two together. It's his birthday soon. He specifically asked me to stay up on this day. But then part of me is also like, no, Kess wouldn't put that together. Kess doesn't understand birthdays. Mm. In character, unless someone asks, the only mention of it, I think, would be when we're, when they bring Dagon back. Bro Brooks would, if they bring Dagon back, Brooks would be like, you died on my birthday. How fucking dare you? That's inconvenient. and You want me a drink. There. <laughs> um, there's not really much specified, but as far as it goes, it's like 
time time elapses in the hells, the things don't age. But like as far as like time spent in the hells versus time spent on the pl planetary plane, it's it's the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. we it's don't just age. that things don't age. That things don't age, but time passes. It's it's weird. Yeah. Interesting. I guess because okay. In the hells, like all devils and creatures down there, they are immortal because they can't just they don't die of age. So I guess in that sense, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like time passes yeah. but things don't age because they don't have yeah. to they don't Yeah, you know what I mean? That, yeah. That makes okay. sense. Yeah. I get it. Uh so at least yeah. that's not that's something we don't have to worry about. It's like, oh wait, how many t days have passed on the prime material plane? Well, Thank God, because keeping track of that shit is yeah. frustrating. Yeah, like Brooks <laughs> Brooks is dealing with the one thing that he can't punch, and that's the mortality of his friends. <laughs> um Final question from Sassy was for me. For you. How are you, King? I'm great. <laughs> um I had a sleep. I thought I looked like shit, actually. I fucking I couldn't sleep. I don't think it was related, but I just couldn't sleep. Um I don't know, man. Like, I find it very hard to, like I said before, when I know that there's, like, real stakes in fights, I tend to roll the dice a lot more to decide my targeting instead of me on the whim. Really because I don't want my subcon subconscious... You know, because subconsciously, I want everyone to survive and I want, I want you guys to win, right? I want you guys to win. So, to avoid that intrusive thought from winning... When I know that there's a lot of stakes, I'll, I'll just roll the dice a lot more to decide targeting. Like, I did a lot of that during uh, the last fight. So that I can, after a session, I can I can sit down and be like, okay, it happened. And it wasn't me that decided it. I wasn't the one that had a narrative and, and wanted someone to... No, it was completely up to chance. Uh, so in that sense, I mean, I feel pretty good about what happened. Uh, I feel like... Yeah, it opens up a, a window for a lot of good storytelling. It opens up a window for uh, a lot of good character development. And um, at the end of the day, even though they lost someone, the party won, right? So, I, you know, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, and gave you also a really good future plot hook, because we've angered a whole circle of generals of hell, because we took out one of their own. So. There's already so much going on around your party. I know, we, as if you we, needed we, another we, one, we, but now we you killed, have one. We killed one of my great-great-great-great-granddad's best friends. I'll just, tie this in, <laughs> I'll just tie this in with Brooks' fucking backstory somehow, you know what I mean? We turned up into the fucking... Surprise, Balzafon is Brooks' great-great-great-great-uncle. Uh, like How dare fucking you? Fucking Asmodeus shows up, and I'm like, listen, man, we're related, and you killed one of my boys, that's not cool. Now you gotta put. <laughs> now you gotta and take his gonna, place. He's gonna he's gonna like take a fucking what's it, one of those coins like those soul coins that they have down there. And this is mine now, bitch. I own you. I'll cash this in one day. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to throw it out there. You know what? I'm not gonna specify who, but there were two, maybe three people in the party that like if Asmodeus was there and they died. My boy might be pulling out the parchment and the the quill. <laughs> I'm not gonna specify who had the fucking party. Yep. Yeah, but um, I don't want. I don't want you to know which half you're in, Duke. Fuck you. But yeah, I don't know. That's pretty good. I think uh, fucking Bell threw me off, dude. Yeah. When, when Belle had a little moment with her with with Kess's dad and she suddenly started fucking bawling, I was like, listen, you fucking bitch. Wait, she started bawling? Yeah. When we had, I like, went back and deaf, watched when it. We had a little I, deaf and, I cheated. Yeah, Bell Bell you went cheated? full. Because I was I was dead, so I was Bell, like, I Bell went this, full Kess mode and I started fucking bawling <laughs> and I was like, listen, uh, you, I was you bitch. I wasn't ready. You should stop. I, also, you know for what? for reference, I fully supported like because some people <laughs> might be like, "Oh, you abandoned us," and like if Dagon comes back, I'm be like, "Dude, that was that was the wise decision. Like, fucking, it was not looking good. Save yourself." I, I am. Kess had a fucking well, panic attack and her fight or fight or flight yeah. kicked in, you know. And she yeah, Laura fight. and Dagon, no shade to Kess's decision, would have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, I yeah. I have to try really hard because like, I've logicked out in my head. That Brooks really doesn't like Kess's dad. So every time we talk about Kess's dad, I'm like, he's not a piece of shit. You don't think that he's a piece of shit. Brooks thinks he's a piece of shit. 
Yeah, I mean, there's really so like the. He's only recently been a dad, so he has yeah. a lot to learn. But he's it's, he's not he's not a bad guy. He's just no like I. It's just I the know, nature. Uh, it's just the nature of 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 his people, where it's like they fuck around a lot, and you know if they have kids, they'll never know about him. Like unless, I, they, I, unless I, they want to, you know what I mean. I I out of it's the same as Lauren being like super upset and being in like Dagon's headspace. Like mm. I know that like that's why he had that the way. But like in Brooks's head, Brooks's headspace. Her dad's an asshole. He really like, isn't. <laughs> yeah, no, but like Brooks, yeah, like yeah. Brooks you is. think Brooks has a really, really healthy, like loving, supportive father figure, and yeah, like they argue. Ah, uh, Brooks but, like, is the opposite. <sighs> I didn't say father. I said father figure. Fuck you. <laughs> like the idea of not having that, like Brooks feels really bad for Kess and the childhood she had. And he's a bit yeah, like it was great, dude. Kes was able to light like chicken coops on fire and shit, bro. It was lit. You know, yeah, had the to house disguise... of the priestess with chickens. That... Had a mom who was ashamed of what her daughter looked like, and a dad who didn't uh, show up. Like... Yeah, but the chicken coop, man. <laughs> oh, I don't believe that ever happened. Guess is full of bullshit, dude. Whenever Belle throws on her, pulls out another fucking story out of her ass, I'm like, Do you know, the worst part is that we know canonically Did there's fake. Because Br because Bran carried <laughs> fucking Faye chicken. Like, I have her backstory saved my PC, and I'm like, I'm not gonna bother checking to see if she actually wrote that or if there's something she just fucking, you know, like, whatever. No point. whatever <laughs> yeah. Bell Belle, Belle whips out another fucking bullshit Kess's childhood story every other week, and I'm like, oh, whatever, man. Sure. I think that's part of the charm of Kess, though. Like, oh, yeah, you no, never know whether it's bullshit or not. Kess is a fucking jester, like, straight up. Basically, she's I, the jester. We're really of our party. playing, like, a chaotic group this, this campaign. Hmm. Um, I think it's because we're entirely neutral, and many of us are chaotic neutral. So it's yeah. that's what happens. <laughs> and the one, the Can one of the what? two, like really heavily lawful people. We, we have so we have two <laughs> like lawful people in the party, right? Because Davian's neutral, if I remember. Well, you had to. Okay, true. We had, we had, <laughs> we had to. But like, Dagon's really lawful, but Dagon's also in the like dynamic of the party especially early on we didn't want to rock the boat i do feel like that's another thing that would change if she gets brought back she's like you know what i was all like follow the rules because like you could die it's like and then i died anyway fuck the rules <laughs> we're gonna convert her to the the chaos <laughs> fuck the laws the system doesn't work i do think she'll Dragon come back especially if she comes back as a ghost and is out here possessing people she's she's gonna be so much more chaotic right. than she was and then, then and then the only other lawful mm -hmm. member in the party is fucking is it lazarus a Lazarin, and he's not a good person. He's just a fucking no, he just follows the rules. bureaucrat. <laughs> yeah, like a Lazarin is the bourgeois. Like <laughs> he's lawful, but only because to fucking capitalism. You know, the fucking Walt Disney wears him like a puppet. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, you good, man? My D &D? Is this like, is this like you lashing out because you hate the system? Like, this is not the point. It's like, like my, my socialist rant on D&D. Like, try and see if you can book a spot oh on God. fucking Ban Shapiro's podcast. Maybe that's like your platform. <laughs> that's, that's your place. Um, is, is Ben Shapiro's platform the place to talk about like anti-capitalism? Fucking no, dude. I don't, do you think I watch mm. that fucking show? I don't fucking know. I can imagine the only thing he talks about how it's perfectly natural for his wife not to get wet. Something about hating the fact that everybody's a fucking snowflake or some shit. That's what he does. Yeah. Right? How dare um, you be offended when I punched your mother? I don't do that. I just talk about nerd stuff, all right? If you want to talk about how the system <laughs> is corrupt and we need to rebuild from the ground up, then this is not the place. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that's an in-character conversation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, man. Um, Duke also submitted a question. Uh, for me... Uh, there was no shortage of desperate prayers and pleas from players to their respective patrons and deities. At what point do you lean towards offering some kind of divine intervention? Or might push you one uh, way or the other in terms of throwing a bone, leaving us to the lions? Um, a lot of things. A lot of things factor into that. Um, because, like, you know, the, the, the reason why I decided to not have, you know, you, Davian, pleading with Kasuth and... Uh, Elazarin pleading with uh, Grumbar and uh, whoever else did some pleading, uh, Joaquin, whatever. Life and death isn't really their domain. 
they have no say in in that department um so like so you know i mean like that's why i was like yeah i mean i get it but like See, if one of y'all had like a, you know, like a Raven Queen or a, or a, or a whatever the fuck, then that could have mattered more. I would have rolled something and be like, yeah, will this help kind of thing. But because of the nature of A, they're not really gods. They're just very powerful elemental beings for the most part. Um, I was just like, this isn't really their, their, their cup of tea. But in general... Um, a lot of things weigh in. A lot of factors weigh into me being like, oh, yeah, I'll throw him a bone, or mm -hmm, this, is, this is the consequence of their own actions. Let them deal with things. Um, I just decided that the nature of the fight and um, the place you were at also weighed in a lot. Like, in the Prime Material Plane, that's fair game, but if a deity suddenly steps in, like, it's a... It, it, the way the the kind of like the 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 the, 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 the cosmic you know multiverse of D and D works is that some planes are harder to penetrate by gods than others, and you are in the deepest depths of the nine hells. So that also waited like even if they wanted to, could they? You know what I mean? Um, but for this fight in particular, I was just like, listen. Is they're on their own and I decided that very early on I was like the moment it turned out that uh that that y'all were going to the hells I was like okay well they're on their own they have they are left to do they're gonna have to make do with what they got uh because they're in the fucking belly of the beast right now so a lot of factors play in location uh types of deities with roleplay, all of that, all of the above weighs in, but for the sake of this particular encounter, I was just like, nah, they're on their own. Purely because of, of, of where you were, the stakes, and the intensity of the battle. You know? <laughs> Hope that answered it a little bit. A little bit. <clears throat> but, uh, like we said, uh, the chapter Diagon may not be over yet. Who knows? Uh, in the meantime, uh, Laura will be here on Sunday. Um, she'll be playing, uh, uh, you know, a, a PC NPC, I guess. Uh, a character that yeah. you can completely design yourself, by the way. Um, you know, whatever you want uh, them to be and how they, how, you know, what race, class, and all that shit. That's completely up to you. And just tell me we'll the race, class, and name, please. And we'll just and we'll just say. The only thing I'll request: could you just send me? It could even be a, a few sentences, not a ton of work, but whatever your notes are on, like the group of people, like the camp that they're with right now, the people that they they met, just, just like the general like purpose of that organization, and like how what they do or something, because it'll probably just be like a character that's part of. Um, I wrote down their name the in my notes. Crusade. Old. I was gonna, I was gonna show off my note taking. I am Anyway, um, just like, yeah, just send me like that. a really brief blurb about the Iron, because I'll probably just make a member of the Iron Crusade to play. That'll go with them while they're there. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, and like the reason that the party haven't seen them yet was because I don't know they were out scouting while you guys all fucking showed up or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a very easy yeah. like fix for that shit. So yeah, yeah, that'll work. And then you know they'll you know. You guys are going, you were told about uh, this this fort that they need intel from, and if there's any place nearby that will have the tools you need to get out of there, that will be it. So it's kind of like, a, you know, we both have shit we need from that place, so let's just work together and get it to kind of, kind of thing. So it would make sense for, for them to tag along anyway, and, you know, it all I'm, I'm it all, torn. Parmy wants to try and make some really stupid, not stupid, like, unbearable to do, but just, like, comedic voice for the character just to try and be like this is a good chance for me to try and get a little bit better at doing different voices because it's not a character that will be in there for a long time but then Do i'm also accent. like this could go so badly <laughs> i really want to make i, really I love make the idea of everyone like in the Koiba house having an australian accent no, I want. I can't do Australian at all, but I really want to see if I can pull off like drunk Koiba as the accent but they're, for but they're down under. I make. They're down but under. i don't think Dude. i can did he say, was it the DS chat where he sent that fucking the fox video, video? Of the fox? Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Hello, okay. lad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, lad. 
<laughs> I kind of want the character oh, I make to sound like that, but dude. I don't think I can pull it off. That's fucking funny. <laughs> I'm gonna um, as far as discourse goes, that's that's me. I don't have anything else to say, really, unless you guys have anything you want to talk about or, or ask or, or anything. I feel like uh, the last couple of sessions were pretty fucking rough, and um, this entire like s story arc of getting out of escaping from <laughs> hell with the tooth uh, and all of that shit's gonna be um, it's gonna be something. It's gonna be something. It's trauma, and the worst part is we look forward to you. It like my man every every week. My man waits behind the door for me to walk into my room. Fucking stabs me in the kidneys. <laughs> and then after two and a half hours, three hours of bleeding out after the stabbing, I turn around and go, same time next week. I just, I guess I just say this is my, my last chance for Dutch to be like, if it's a pain, I am perfectly happy to sit out for four. Because also you say like, you don't want to take away my d and I'm running another campaign. I'm playing in a Witchlight campaign. Like I have d and outlets. So sounds like if you'd rather, I just. Sounds like a boy doesn't want to be here on Sunday, guys. Maybe Laura just doesn't want to be in the in the group anymore. We maybe should Laura's, start Laura. Maybe Laura wants to leave us, guys. I think Laura just wants to leave us, guys. Well, should, oh. we, should we start? Yo, any, any I just, I just don't want to like force myself in there when the consequences. You're not forcing yourself in there, I motherfucker. You're part of this group, so if you want to still play, even though your character is dead for now, asterisk, <laughs> you can. Okay. Idiot. Okay. I mean, the good news is that I have one less... Y'all can't complain at whatever character I, I come up with in the interim. <laughs> I have one less set of stats to edit for for this week, so... Yeah, because there's so much, to, so much fucking <gasps> work, dude. <laughs> I mean, this is the perk of having everything set up in templates. True, true, true. Um, alright. Another idea. Oh, God. Uh oh This was, <laughs> oh, uh, no. this was Dungeon Discourse. On a Monday, um... Thanks for thanks for watching, guys. This was a good, thanks, good, good little chat. We'll be here again uh, for the next DS on Sunday, and we'll see how it all unfolds. Um, good divinity on Thursday. Thursday right? we'll be doing divinity and finishing that. Oh yeah. Tune in. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Appreciate you, and uh, we'll be getting out of here. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be streaming tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. If anyone's still awake, we're playing some Mario Party uh, tournament Hell with yeah. my teammates again. Yeah, it was like, it was yeah, like it's a, a tournament. Party, we, right? yeah. It's a tournament. We have multiple. Everyone has to play multiple games, and you get points. Imagine playing a Mario game. Party tournament, but still not playing Mario Party with me after like a year after we said that we would. I tried, and people bailed, and then we just haven't <laughs> planned it again. And now I need to find my game because it's missing, and I'm very upset. But... I haven't actually played Mario Party on the Switch yet, so. <sighs> Fuck. Hey. Anyway. Have a good night, everybody. To go to bed. Take care. I'm tired. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened. Um, Have a nap. Take care, y'all. Have a good night. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Du -du -dum. Bom, bom, bom. You gone? Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Du -du 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 -dum. Now slowly, like, fade out. Just like...